Hi, Dave Hadfield here, and that guy on the other side of the tiger moth is Doug Watson. We happened to sit beside each other in 1978 at Air Canada's pilot induction course, and we're still hanging out together now. Doug has restored this tiger moth, done a beautiful job, and since I have some tiger moth time, he's asked me to do the first flight in it and then give him a checkout. Now, a tiger moth is a wonderful thing. There's nothing quite like it. I flew this one for a few years for the Edenvale Classic Aircraft Foundation and really enjoyed it. It's not an 82C, the Canadian version, which I flew at Vintage Wings. The 82A had just a tail skid, no brakes, and no electrics. Lots of fun, and a great distiller of airmanship. <laughs> But for a first flight, you never just hop in and go, of course. The test flight starts with the logbook and the paperwork. This moth was built in Australia and then went to the United States and flew with Art Scholl in various movie roles over the years. So it took a little while for me to confirm the paperwork trail and also that the weight and balance was within the CAG limits. My next step is a very in-depth inspection of the aeroplane. Sometimes this can take an entire day to finish because you always find some things. But in this case, we got it all done in two or three hours. And finally, gas it up. It's amazing how many test flights have actually run out of fuel. Okay, have you primed it? Prime it. The Gypsy Major engine in a Tiger Moth doesn't have a normal primer. Instead, you push down a plunger on the carburetor, which depresses the float in the bowl. Fuel then comes in, fills it up, spills down into the intake manifold, then out a drain tube at the aft end of the manifold, out onto the ground, and depending which way the wind's blowing, maybe all over your shoes. <laughs> and then you pull the prop through a few blades with the mags off to suck that fuel-air mixture into the cylinders before you're ready to go. The magnetos are selected off at this point, of course, and it's wonderful to have a helper, but that person always treats the prop as if it's live because magnetos cannot be shut off. They can only be grounded out, and if there's a problem with the switch or the grounding, they're live no matter what the switch says. Whether it's best to swing the prop from behind or in front is something I'm not going to get into here. But it's important to select the right mag for start on a Tiger because that's the impulse mag, and it has a retarded spark which is very helpful in the process and helps prevent back running. But this gypsy Clear. has all the modern conveniences. Clear. As soon as it fires, we turn the left mag on, check the oil pressure, let it warm up for four minutes, and there's not much else to it. It's very difficult to taxi a tail skid tiger moth on pavement. You have almost no directional control. So this airplane has been modified with a small wheel built into the tail skid and a set of weak but very useful disc brakes. And they're operated by individual pedals which come down from above and it's very easy to remove your feet from them so that you don't hit a brake by mistake. Tigers are designed to be very light in the tail, so you sure have to be careful with brakes. The natural home for any of these old biplanes is grass. They're all much better on a grass surface than a paved surface. And for this first flight, where I'm not quite sure how the airplane is going to track at speed, that's where I'm going. The next item is some taxi tests. Big figure eights in both directions. I want to get a feel for how this thing responds and calibrate the brakes, which, as I said before, I have to be very careful with. But eventually we're at the button of runway 21, Lindsay Kawartha Lakes Airport. I've completed the checks and also confirmed that there's nobody on the cross runway. And it's time to go.
So let's run through that takeoff again. Get straight, stick hard back, power up smoothly, and make sure you get the 1850 RPM this airplane needs to achieve flight. Count three Mississippis before you raise the tail and do that gently. Keep it straight, and remember this is a left foot airplane. Let it fly off when it's ready. Double check for traffic, and keep checking the RPM and oil pressure because this is a first flight. So at one point during that takeoff, I looked significantly left and tapped the airspeed indicator. That's because the one on the panel didn't work. Fortunately, this one had a paddle blade indicator out on the strut, and in moths, that's the one I prefer anyway. I turned crosswind early after this takeoff. That's to avoid a forest in case the engine quits. So at this point I had a judgment call to make. Do I climb up to 4,000 feet overhead and do stalls? Or do I take a couple of minutes to get used to the airplane, then go back in and land? Well, during the pre-flight inspection, we'd found some sediment in the fuel tank sump. So we took sample after sample until it was clear, then raised the tail up three feet and did it again, and then rocked the wings like crazy and did it again, until I was satisfied. But this was a first flight, and if there was any leftover sediment in that tank, I was definitely stirring it up, and this 130 horsepower Gypsy was not exactly delivering a rocket-like rate of climb, so I thought it was more prudent to go back and land, and then check the fuel screen. And that's why you see me staying close, sashaying back and forth to feel out the airplane, coordinating with any other traffic, and getting ready to bring it back. Also, you can't see it in the video, but I'm comparing the paddle blade airspeed indicator with the ground speed readout from ForeFlight on my cell phone, just to make sure it's in the ballpark. Or in this case, the air park. I'm on a right base for runway 21, which is as published. My plan is to wait until I'm high on approach, then pull the power to idle, and then slip off the excess altitude. As I said before, it's a new engine, and I have no reason to trust it yet. Well, that didn't hurt too much. Time to turn around, taxi back, and find out what leaked, broke, or fell off.
Nags are off, Asher's off. <coughs> Left the fuel on. Oh, I guess you want the fuel off, don't you? Nags airplane! <coughs> you want the fuel off, right? Yeah. Off. Wow, that was fun. Yeah. I have uh, not had that feeling for a while. Really? It was a huge, wonderful sense of deja vu. <laughs> It is so A model moth, right? So completely different from the Canadian ones. That tailwheel steering is superb. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, you don't need brakes in this thing. You just uh, tailwheel steer and then ground loop your way around. Just to attack, attack a 180 with a little room, a little speed, just let it ground loop around. You don't need the brakes. Really nice. Uh, it's not a powerhouse for climb. No. Um, what RPM did you got have? off easy, but sure didn't climb very fast. We got 1950 on the initial takeoff run, which is exactly what you'd expect. And then I had to pull it back as soon as I leveled off a little bit. Your airspeed indicator does not work at all. Zero. Oh, really? I was using that one. Hmm. I just used 70 for everything. Well, 70 for climb, 70 for approach. I stayed very high there because I wasn't sure yeah. and then uh, I turned around just this side of the taxiway but I just I, I wanted some energy in the bank on that one and I'd yeah. kind of forgotten how far these glide you know really better than I thought yeah it looked nice coming in nice landing yeah I skipped on the mains and then figured oh yeah right no that was good I liked my seating position, it was just right, nice and high. Anyway, congratulations, man. It worked. <laughs> waltz, waltz, waltz with a tiger. Nothing you do could be anything finer. Waltz, waltz, waltz with a tiger. Better stay light on your toes. Moving with grace, no matter who leads. Give to the tiger whatever she needs. Ask in her smile, beware when she feeds Never, no fear for it shows Waltz, waltz, waltz with a tiger Nothing you do could be anything finer Waltz, waltz, waltz with a tiger Better stay light on your toes